Hi, I've seen a lot of uh, presentations or uh, Instagram posts about shadow work recently. Um, so I want to talk about psychology and Jungian psychology in general um, in relation to archetypes and shadow work. So the first thing to look at is archetypes. And um, archetypes are um, uh, patterns in the psyche. So they're different from stereotypes in that stereotypes are generally a negative thing and they, um, they are something we project onto whole groups of people and um, uh, usually have negative connotations, whereas archetypes can be positive. So the word archetype means original pattern in ancient Greek, and they were first described by Carl Gustav Jung. He identified 12 universal mythic archetypes residing within our collective unconscious, and they are listed in this diagram. These are 12 primary types that represent the range of basic human emotions, and we all tend to have one archetype that dominates our personality. So that isn't, it doesn't end there because um, we need to individuate and become individuals, and that's when we move beyond our primary archetype. Now, according to Victoria Lynn Schmidt in 45 Master Archetypes, that happens when we rub up against other people with a different archetype. So other examples of archetypes that you can find kicking around the place um, is like watching Star Trek, for example, because the, the main characters are quite often um, archetypes. Um, looking at the major arcana of the tarot, because those are archetypes. And um, you know, pretty much every time, although gods are individual, they often express an archetype. Um, so, for example, we tend to think of the earth goddess as a mother, and that's an archetype. So, um, the person who's made this handy diagram has managed to make these gender neutral, which is really helpful because we have caregiver, which is an ethic of service uh, ruler which is all about control um, artist innovation creativity uh, the innocent which also ties in with the fool in the tarot deck which is an archetype of safety and the sage again ties in with the hermit in the tarot deck uh, the sage represents knowledge um, then we have the explorer um, which represents freedom, but uh, there's also a negative side to that, i.e. colonialism. Um, the outlaw, um, the maverick, represents liberation. Um, the magician represents power. Now, there's an interesting concept because there's different types of power. There's power from within and there's power over and there's power with, uh, as Starhawk and the Quakers have pointed out. Uh, so power with is power in community. Um, power from within is your personal power. And power over is the negative aspect of that. Um, contrast that with the hero and the idea of mastery. So this is like mastering a skill. Um, and obviously there's a negative side to that as well. Um, the lover... Um, Again, tarot card of the lovers, um, principle of intimacy, and then the jester, which also ties in with the fool card, um, principle of pleasure, and every man, that's an interesting one, um, principle of belonging, so the idea of the member of the crowd. Um, so there are many, there are other archetypes beyond these, but these are the primary ones. So uh, you, there's a great book by Jung called Four Archetypes, which is helpful. And also the 
aforementioned book by Victoria Lynn-Schmidt, uh, which you can see in the references at the end. Okay. Um, so shadow work, um, the, the term shadow comes from the Jungian model of the psyche. And actually the shadow has two parts, the, the dark shadow and the golden shadow. And the, sh the dark shadow is dark in the sense that we, uh, by having repressed the elements in the shadow, um, we can't see them. So it's not dark in a negative sense, um, because I try not to use the word darkness in a negative sense. Um, it's dark in the sense of obscure, can't see it because we've repressed it. Okay. Um, so, and the purpose of shadow work is to bring the elements uh, that we've repressed into our conscious mind so that we can integrate them into our personality and use their energy rather than their energy driving us from parts of us that we're not aware of, okay? So here is the classic Jungian model of the psyche. Um, this is a more, this is one of the more complicated outlines of it. Um, so we have the persona, which is the face we present to the world. I think the word persona literally means face. Uh, then we have the ego, uh, which is generally in the driving seat. Um, and again, the aim in paganism is not to destroy the ego, uh, but to situate it in right relationship with the rest of the psyche. And these are all, so the persona and the ego are all part of the conscious mind. And then just below that, we have the personal unconscious. And within that, that we harbor various complexes. And these can be linked in to archetypes. Uh, below that, we have the shadow. Um, and then the soul image. And I think the soul image is what's called the anima or animus in classical Jungian ideas. Um, so it's the um, the beloved, the ideal beloved. And then we have underneath that, we have the mana personality, uh, which is like the true self or the higher self in occult thought. Um, so as you can see, then the, the lower part of the diagram has the collective unconscious and the collective unconscious is a place where we share ideas and dreams and symbols with um, the rest of our culture and the rest of humanity and archetypes reside in the collective unconscious so um, we need to integrate these hidden aspects into the conscious mind in order to grow and individuate Okay, so one of the ways we can do this is these excellent shadow exercises. And I've had these kick around on my computer for so long that I can no longer remember which website I got them from. So I apologize to the author of these for that. Um, so the idea of the shadow exercise is to think of someone you know that you dislike or even hate and write down a description of that person. Um, with the specific list of the characteristics that you don't like. Okay, be as specific as possible. When you've done that, you draw a box around what you've written and at the top you write my shadow. And the reason we do that is because these are the hidden and repressed aspects of yourself that you dislike and you're busy projecting them onto um, other people. Um, and the way to deal with that, as I said, is to bring those qualities into the conscious mind and use them constructively. So, for example, um, you know, you might be thinking anger is a bad characteristic. I need to repress that. And, and um, quite often repressing anger can actually lead to depression and it certainly leads to spiritual bypassing. Um, so rather than repressing the anger we need to get to the root cause of what it is we're angry about 
and seek to uh, deal with the with the causes of the anger. So, um, and if we can't deal with the causes of the anger because it's too big, then we get involved in social justice activism to address the issues that the anger is is about. Okay, so rather than kind of going, oh no, you mustn't be angry, anger's bad and destructive and blah, blah, blah. No, righteous anger is good. We need that anger. We need the energy and the creativity of that anger to get angry and change the world. Um, so don't repress that anger um, because it, if you do, it's that's a bad thing. Um, we could do without the spiritual than thou types who go around going, oh no, don't be so negative, man. You know. Um, obviously there is a very destructive side to anger um, and and hate and we need to not uh, we need to try and have compassion for people but um, only up to a point and really we should have more compassion for the victims of um, the evils of the world than we should for the perpetrators of them um that's very important uh, you know if you find yourself thinking oh you know both sides i feel like i should enter into the perspective of the other person no enter into the perspective of the victim and get angry and help and do something to help them um anyway uh i always find anger is a go-to example for this kind of thing but um there are other um supposedly negative emotions that get repressed that we can integrate into um the conscious self and make creative use of um and so the other the other side of shadow work is the golden shadow exercise um and the golden shadow is things that we've repressed because we can't cope with them right now uh, so they would be like qualities that are regarded as positive so the golden shadow exercise is to think of someone you know that you admire or even hero worship and write down a description of that person and the qualities that you admire in them. Um, again, be as specific as possible. Then draw a box around what you've written and at the top write my golden shadow. Now, the great thing about this is that you possess these qualities, but you are not ready maybe to own that you possess these qualities. And that is a very powerful realization um, that you are potentially all these things. Um, because guess what? You can harness those qualities in the service of social justice. Because, um, you know, for me, spirituality is about creating a better world for everyone. It's not just, you know, I'm going to be all serene and calm and ignore the problems of the rest of the world. Um, it's let's transform the world and make it better for everyone and that means activism and politics you didn't think you were going to get through a video by me without me mentioning activism and politics and social justice did you so another key important aspect of all of this is projection and transference and um uh so the concept of projection is um, a psychological process that means where it's where you attribute unacceptable thoughts, feelings, traits or behaviours to others, but they're really your own characteristics. And that is part of the, you know, when we repress something into the shadow, um, the obscure part of our subconscious, um, that's the first part of the process and the second part of the process is that we then project those issues onto other people and constantly find ourselves butting up against people who have those characteristics or at least that we perceive to have those characteristics and the way to deal with that is to bring them into the conscious and deal with them and use them constructively and the other part of this is transference um, which is where we transfer the role of a significant other in life to another person uh, so for example projecting your mother onto your high priestess please don't do this I am not your mum um, 
it's it's really annoying um uh but i'm sure we've all had those moments where we've been in a situation and someone's attributed some random thought or belief or behavior to us and we've gone where the hell did that come from um and then you realize that they're projecting somebody else onto you um this is also this also happens a lot when you leave one relationship and start on a new relationship and you start um attributing characteristics of the old relationship onto the new relationship also known as emotional baggage um but that is also transference so worth well worth being aware of um because otherwise you end up picking the same toxic relationship over and over again so as soon as we become aware of all this emotional baggage we can choose healthier relationships which is good okay so yeah that's uh pretty much it um some further reading i uh, really recommend this victoria lynn schmidt book um it's actually a book about how to use archetypes in novel writing but it's highly relevant for understanding the concept of archetypes um article by connor neil understanding personality the 12 Jungian archetypes that's where i got the archetypes diagram from um the Jungian model of the psyche came from this uh psyche journal article um scott jeffrey shadow work uh, also a great article um jude parler paler uh eight steps to heal the wounded self and then the transference and counter transference and projection stuff came from this counseling tutor article uh, so i'll put the links to those below the video i uh, hope you enjoyed this video and um i hope you can see how it's highly relevant to spiritual practice and pagan practice in general so thanks for listening and blessed be